Good afternoon, after, I don't know, good something, whatever it is, morning, afternoon, night, lovely evening, beautiful morning, uh, miserable day, I don't know, hopefully it's not miserable, I don't know why I said that. But anyways, I'm going to deal with uh, section 1.2, and this is going to be over graphs of equations. This is going to be like circles, absolute values, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to have to graph them, so don't freak out on me too much. Um, but you're going to see some different types of examples. This is stuff that you've seen all before, except for our symmetry, which are algebraic, algebraic tests. And I will get to that at the end. But first, I'm going to look at one example. After I draw a calligraphic monkey. Yeah! Monkeys make everything better. So one type of example, whoa. Tripped over a desk. <laughs> but you couldn't laugh at me because you couldn't see it. Ah, joke's on you. All right. One type of example is, does this point lie on this line? It may be x squared or whatever it is, but basically all you're going to do is take the x, plug it in where you see x, take the y, plug it in where you see y, and then as long as you get down to a true statement, you're okay. So if we do this, 2 is y, so 2 equals 3 plus the absolute value, that's not 14x, that's the absolute value, absolute value of 4 times 6 minus 1, absolute value. Well, 4 times 6 is 24 minus 1, so 2 equals 3 plus the absolute value of 23. Don't forget, absolute value just means your actual value. So if this was negative 23 on the inside, it would still come out as 23. So I have 2 equals 3 plus 23. Oops, getting ahead of myself. So 2 equals 26, which is not a true statement. So this since this is not a true statement, this does not lie on the line. No way. Jose. I hope I have a student named Jose once, so then he thinks I'm talking to him. Maybe I am. Hi, Jose. How are you doing? Looking at another example, uh, you may also be asked to find the x and y intercepts. Well, if we think about our graph and say this is our line. No, I just made up a random line. Don't forget, this is the x-intercept, where we have something comma zero. We know the y has to be zero because it's on the x-axis. Well, likewise, we have the y-intercept, where it's on the x or on the y-axis, so my x has to be zero, and the y will be something. So, in order to find the x-intercept, the x-intercept. I know this is the point something comma zero. If I know y is zero, then I can go ahead and plug that into my equation so that I have the square root of three minus two x, and then solve for x. So to get rid of this square root, square both sides so that you have zero equals three minus two x, and then we can subtract the three to the other side, so minus three, minus three, then I have negative three equals negative two x. Divide by negative two, so this will be x equals three over two. So I have the point three over two, zero. There's my x-intercept. Then to get the y-intercept, I know this is zero comma something. All I need to do is plug in zero for x so that I have y equals the absolute or square root of three minus two times zero. Well, two times zero is zero, so I have y equals square root of three. Well, cool, there she is. So zero, square root three, you can also do one point, whatever it is, 1.76 or something like that. That's all you need to do. Hopefully this is just a refresher for you guys, this stuff that you saw in Algebra 2. But for the standard form of a circle, you have x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared, where the center is hk. But notice, the signs for hk are the opposite of what they are in the equation. So when you pull them out or put them back into the equation, make sure you change the signs on whatever number it is. And the radius is r, but notice with these two, this is r, and then on the equation, it's r squared. So if this is 25 here, then this is 5 down there. Cool? Cool. So with a problem like this, Write the equation of a circle in standard form. Given the center is negative 5, 2. Given the radius is 7. I have everything I need. I just need to make sure that I remember this. 
all that jazz. That is stuff that you will not be given on a test or a quiz or anything like that. This is something that you're going to have to memorize. Just don't forget it came from Algebra 2, so you have seen it before. Don't freak out, I'll make too bad. Okay, so here is H, here is K. Can't forget that I need to switch the signs when I put it back in, so this will be X plus 5 squared plus Y minus 2 squared equals R squared. The radius is 7, don't forget to square it, so in your equation it is 49. That's it. No need to simplify anything. Because that's as simple as she goes. If you really want to, you can have a bow or something. So, oh, now she looks so cute, little baby girl. She's so precious. To the library, Austin Fields, please return immediately to the library. Don't do it, Austin. It's a trap. Okay, looking at another type of example. Don't honk at me. Write the equation of a circle whose center is 2, negative 3, and has a solution point 5, 1. So just using your equation again, x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equals r squared. We have the h, we have the k. So just I'm going to put it into our equation, what we have so far. So x minus 2, make sure you switch the signs, so squared plus y plus 3 squared equals r squared. Well, the only information that we need now is what r squared is. However, I have that 5, 1 is a solution point, so that's supposed to be on our circle. So since it's supposed to be on our circle, it must work in the equation. So therefore, I can say that 5 minus 2 squared plus 1 plus 3 squared equals r squared would work. I can use this to find what r squared is going to be. 5 minus 2 is 3. 3 squared is 9 plus 1 plus 3 is 4, 4 squared is 16, equals r squared, so 25 equals r squared, so just put that back into your equation, so I'm just going to get rid of this r squared, and instead I'm going to put 25, and there she is, in all of her glory. Questions? Nah, of course you don't have any, you can't even ask any if you wanted to. Well, you may have questions, so ask me in class if you have questions. Sometimes it's better not to ask with me and just accept that I'm crazy. Um, <laughs> just reminding you guys in the library that you're in the library. <laughs> ah, okay, find the center and radius of x minus 2 squared plus y squared. So if I want to find the center, don't forget to change the sign. So the center is 2. Since there's not really like y plus anything, it's like y plus 0 squared, right? The 0 is just kind of not there. So 2 zero is our center. So center. For the radius, don't forget that this is r squared. So we need to take the square root of that to get our radius, which will be 15. Yay! Okay, next thing I'm going to talk to you about is symmetry. Basically, we have all of these rules. Okay, so you may want to pause the video, copy them down. Now that we've done that, notice these are all the same. So basically, what this is saying is if we put in a negative x and it comes out as a positive x, just like we had, then we have y-axis symmetry. If we put in a negative y and it comes out as a positive y, then we have x-axis symmetry. If we put in both negative and they come out both positive, then we have origin symmetry. So basically, for y-axis symmetry, if I have my axes here, uh, I'm going to use a blue dot for my y-axis symmetry. So if I have a point here, x, y, then it can reflect over the y-axis such that I have negative x, y. Oops, that's too big. Uh, 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 uh. Uh, negative x, y, just like x, y. They would both be on our graph. So this is a graph like y squared or something like that. Okay, but basically we're just going to test these different symmetries and see which one works out for each given situation. Okay, so you're going to be given a random equation. In this case, we're given y equals x squared plus 1, and it's just going to ask you to determine the symmetry. If you have a hunch about one symmetry over another, because it's only ever going to be one, or none of them, then test that one first. Let's say, I don't know, maybe I think it's x-axis symmetry. 
So I'm going to test x-axis symmetry, which I know I plug in negative y. This is really the only thing I'm going to change. So in doing that, if I replace y with a negative y and leave everything else the same, this is still negative y, so negative y equals x squared plus 1. It is going to have to look exactly like your original function. The difference between this and my original function is this negative y, so I know it's not going to be x-axis symmetry. All right, well, how about let's test y-axis symmetry. In y-axis symmetry, I have a negative x that I'm going to use, so that the only thing I'm plugging in is this negative x. So in my function, I will have negative x squared plus 1. Well, negative x squared, that will simplify to x squared. So negative times negative is positive 5x squared plus 1. It looks sine for sine exactly like my original function. So since this is true, it is y-axis symmetry. It has to come out to be something that looks exactly like the function that you started out with. Here's another example. Same thing, determining symmetry. So pick one, test it. If it doesn't work, move on to your next one. I kind of think this one might be origin, just by looking at it. The more of these that you do, the more idea you'll have at what you think it is. So with origin, I'm going to plug in a negative x and a negative y and try to make it come out as my original function. Now if I put in a negative y and a negative x, well, negative x cubed will reduce to negative x cubed. Negative y is still negative y. I have negatives on both sides. This has positives on both sides. So in order to make it look just like my original, what I can do is I can divide these both by negative 1 so that I would have y equals x cubed. And there it is. It looks exactly like the original. So I have origin symmetry. And look at one more with you guys. It's the final countdown. Last one. I'm really good at singing. That was actually Miss Lumley, though, next door. She's even better at singing. <laughs> oh, you're so funny, Miss Lumley. All right. Determining symmetry. So say we have, want to check x-axis first. I don't really know. So if I check x-axis, I'm going to plug in a negative y. Whatever you're checking for, the opposite is negative. So I'm checking for x-axis. The y is negative. Then. So if I put in a negative y, everything else stays the same. This will be negative y equals 2x squared minus 3x. Well, I can't really divide by negative 1, so if I do that, that will change all the signs over here. I have this negative y, which is nothing like my original, so it is not x-axis symmetry. Move on to y-axis, where my x is negative. Okay, so if I put in a negative x, I will have y equals 2 times negative x squared minus 3 times negative x. That's an x. Pretend like it's an x, not a 3 with a dash through it. So I still have y. Negative x squared is positive x squared, so I have 2x squared. Minus 3 times negative x is plus 3x. Well, this sign right here is different. Everything else is the same, but since that sign is different, it can't be y-axis symmetry. Well, dang, I'm running out of options. So origin is my last option. All right, plug in negatives for both. So I have negative y equals negative two times, yeah, negative x squared minus three times negative x. This side will be negative one equals two x squared plus three x. Well, dang. I have this sign different and this sign different. That one's the same, but that doesn't really matter much because it's not going to help if I change all the signs on that side. So this is also not origin symmetry. So none. Or no bananas. Hopefully this video was helpful for you guys. Um, that's all I got for you on 1-2. Sorry the video was so long. I will see you in class. Have a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.